had a question from a YouTube video viewer on a Mixamo to Photoshop to Adobe Captivate tutorial I did. And he wanted to know if I could rotate the 3D character once it was in Captivate. Well, I can't because when I went into Photoshop with my character, I only picked one frame of the animation and then exported that out as a still image. But I got to thinking maybe I could pick an animation in Mixamo with a character, download that pointing and turning animation that was built in from Mixamo, export it out of Photoshop as a GIF animation, and then you could play the animated pointing and turning animation within Captivate. So I went into Mixomo and I found this generic character here. I did a search for the animation of pointing and I found this pointing. And I'm going to apply this to my character. Right now it's being a little bit naughty. Let me see if I can play it here. I might have to refresh my screen. Let me go ahead and do that. The reason I use this Xbot character here, as opposed to other characters, I've had a real terrible time downloading some of the Mixamo characters where they don't come down with all their faces complete. So you got to pick one when you download that works. So I'm just going to use this generic kind of animation model bot here. I've applied the pointing animation. I'm going to have this character point to the right. So it's going to turn, point to the right. I'm going to change the speed of it or the overdrive of it down to about half speed. And I'm going to go to download. And I'm going to change my format to a DAE file so Photoshop can open it. I'm going to download this. As soon as this is downloaded, I'm going to unzip it and then we'll open it up in Adobe Photoshop. So it looks like it's done. Let me click on here to double click and unzip it. Let me quit out of Firefox. Let me go to Photoshop here and open Downloads Pointing DAE okay I'm already in my 3d workspace otherwise it would have asked me that but I'm in that I also have my timeline open and you notice it automatically put the animation down here so in the lower left I'm gonna click play and it will play a rough animation of this character turning so on now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this playhead back to the beginning I'm going to come up here and I'm going to twiddle down this little triangle by layer one. And I'm going to come over here. Now hang in. This is a little bit tough. I'm coming down to 3D meshes. I'm going to click that triangle. And I'm going to click this beta surface skeleton. Now make sure you go back to the 3D panel and click on the name of the character. It'll be a little icon of a bone next to it irregardless of what the name is the purpose of this so this is selected so i can set up some keyframes here to turn this character so make sure you have this selected and down here is a little stopwatch before the word beta what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up here and i'm going to hover my 3d rotation icon here and I'm going to turn my character here a little bit like this this is going to be the starting position I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on this stopwatch in the lower left and it's going to remember that position I'm going to go ahead about 10 frames or so about a third of a second for the animation and I'm still on my beta service skeleton. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn them a little bit more. I'm going to come down on my little playhead here 
and I can move this around so when it gets to this position, they're going to start pointing. So maybe what I'll do is I want the turn to last a little bit longer. So I'm going to take this little diamond keyframe. I'm going to move it over here. So what that means is it's going to start in this position. The character is going to rotate, and when it gets to this position, it's going to turn even more and be stopping here as it points upward. When it starts to come down right about here at almost three seconds, I'm going to go up here and make sure I have beta surface with the bone character selected here, and I'm going to rotate my character back to this position. So you notice it put another diamond or keyframe here. So as the Mixamo animation plays, I've animated the character to turn. So let's watch it here. So the character turns. As it starts to move, the character stops turning. And it's going to stay in this position until it finds this next keyframe where I told the character now to turn back. And it will finish up turning back right now. And this is the ending position. So I'm going to stop this. Now, I need to export this out as a GIF animation. And I found the only way I can do it with 3D models is to do the, the hard way. But it works. To get this exported out, we're going to go File, Export, Render Video. Make sure you have a name. Make sure you select a folder. And within this folder, we'll say my local folder, I'm going to make a new folder called Animation. I'm going to pick Choose. Here's the key thing. Down here, it's going to say Adobe Media Encoder. I don't want that. I want to save this out as a Photoshop image sequence. So it's going to export out every frame. And this is another one. you got to have it on ping. Otherwise, you will not have a transparent background. I'm going to keep the size, I'm going to keep the frame rate, and over here where it says Alpha Channel, make sure you turn this to straight, unmatted. That will put our character on a transparent background, so it will appear on the slide properly and captivate. Now I'm going to pick Render. This takes a few minutes to do. So I'm going to pause it, and then I'm going to come back when it's done. Okay, we're back after the rendering out of the image sequence. We've got one more step to do. Because I couldn't export out the 3D animation from Mixamo as a GIF animation, I exported it out, as you saw, as a series of images for an image sequence. Now we're going to reopen that image sequence and turn that into our animated GIF file we can bring in to Captivate. So we're going to go over here to File, Open. I'm going to find my folder, Animation. I'm going to change the date created so it starts up here at 00001 ping. Select the first one and then make sure you turn on image sequence at the bottom and you want a ping file and you click open the frame rate is fine at 30 and now it's opened up this series of images and it's going to play them back to back let's see that play beautiful now this can be exported out as a GIF file. So I'm going to go File, Export, 
Save for Legacy. I'm going to make sure as soon as this comes up in the upper right, it says GIF. We'll take a few seconds for it to do it here. So it's taking a little time because it has to calculate or look at every one of those frames in that image sequence. Now up here it says GIF in the upper right. I'm going to come down here and it says animation looping options. I really only want the character to play the turning and pointing of one time. So I'm going to change it from forever to once. I'm going to keep the size and I'm going to save this out, this GIF animation out. And I'm just going to name this as bot. B-O-T, pointing. And I'm going to save it back in my local folder. So as it's saving out this as a GIF animation, we'll bring that next into Captivate. So all these things take a little bit of processing power and time. So now I'm done in Photoshop here. I'm going to minimize Photoshop. I'm going to come back into Captivate. Notice in Captivate I have a background scene here. It's just a little light blue with a clock with a chalkboard. I put a caption, transparent caption over this to simulate the bulleted points I want the animation character to point at. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move my playhead to the very beginning. I'm going to go up under Media to Animation. I'm going to go to my local folder here. I'm going to pick Date Added, Bot Pointing to GIF. Now it's going to come in quite large, so we have to scale it down here as soon as it gets done calculating. So it takes again a second for this to run. Mostly because I still have Photoshop up and I probably still have, which is eating up a lot of my memory. So here it is. I'm going to go up in the upper left and change it from best fit viewing scale to 50%. I'm going to hold my shift key down and go to a corner and I'm going to scale it down to an appropriate height. And then I'm going to move it over and uh, that looks a little bit big. Let me move it down about this size. And you can kind of fuss with this as soon as you get it looking the way you want. So I'm going to put it right there for now. I'm going to go back up to my viewing scale in the upper left. And I'm going to pick Best Fit. So down here in the timeline, let's play this and see what happens. Okay, now you notice the bot or the animation went away, but the board was still up in the background. I'm going to extend the playback of the animation on the last frame to the end of my sequence here. So let's play this. And it could be the bot character is a little bit high on the screen. So I'm just going to press and move this down a little bit here. Let's try it again. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, just as a reminder, I'm going to pause this. I still have my GIF animation picked. I can come over here in my timing panel and I can apply an animation to this. I'm going to apply a um, entrance animation and I'm going to have it ease in from the left. So I'm going to click on this. And this is the motion path controlling the distance. I'm actually going to take this starting point off the screen. And let's see how this looks. Play. Pretty good. 
Let's go ahead and preview this as an HTML5 in a browser. So here we go. The character comes in, points, and then turns back to me. So I hope this helps you out. Again, main animation of pointing and turning of the character was applied in Mixamo. We applied a couple of two or three keyframes to actually move or rotate the character a little bit to give it some movement of our own in Photoshop. We then had to export it out as a video file, but we saved it out as a image sequence. We re-imported the image sequence back into Photoshop and then we saved that out as a GIF file. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and drop me a note and have a good day.